Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The purpose of this lecture is to prove the Havel Hakimi theorem on graphic sequences. So let's get started. Um, consider the following sequence of uh, non negative integers 7, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 4, 2, 1. These are non nine non negative integers. And the question that I have is that, is there a simple graph that has nine vertices and that so that the degrees of the vertices are exactly the sequence? So one vertex with degree seven, one vertex with degree six, and so on. Is that is that so or not? So that's the question we're going to answer um, in, in this lecture. The plan for this video is to give you a very quick review of basic graph vocabulary. The stuff that I will review here were a subject of an earlier video that uh, went into a little bit more detail, although these are pretty basic graph theory vocabulary and what I tell you here should be enough. Um, then I'm gonna to define to you what a graphic sequence is, give you some examples, um, state the Havel Hakimi theorem, and then give a proof of it. Now, um, this theorem, the result is interesting because it's a little bit surprising that this algorithm for, for answering the questions like the question at the beginning that, um, that that first question can be answered without doing any kind of graphs and just by playing with the sequence. That is a little bit surprising, but the proof is also quite delightful. So, so I, I urge you to, um, to either try to figure out a proof yourself or, um, and I will be impressed if you do, um, or uh, watch the video and then see what the, the, what the proof is. So a simple graph, uh, G is consists of two sets V and E. Um, so a set of vertices that's called V, V refer vertices. So for example, here I might have uh, seven vertices. So vertices are just nodes. And some of these are connected to some of the others. And, and those connections are called edges. So we have also a set of, a set E of edges. Um, so for example, five and six that, that are, are connected here. I draw a line between them. And I think of that as an edge. And so an edge, you can think of it as a pair of vertices. Here, five and six are, are connected. Um, like I want a fancier graph, so I'm also connecting one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to one, and also seven to six and two to six. So um, the E is the collection of those edges. That's all the graph is, a collection of vertices and a collection of edges. Vertices, you could call them nodes if you like. So here, for example, in this example, the vertices is the set one through seven, which in combinatorics we usually denote by bracket seven. And the set of edges are pairs of vertices. So one edge is uh, the, the pair one, two, another one is two, three, three, four, four, five, one, five, two, six, five, six, and six, seven. Um, we are, when we say a simple graph, we're not allowing any double edges or loop, loops. If we wanted to those, we would have a, um, a multigraph or a general graph. In a multigraph, you would allow double edges in, in a general graph, you would allow both uh, double edges and loops. But for the purpose of this lecture, um, I'm only concerned about simple graphs, except for one place where I will, well, where I will tell you. So uh, the way we talk about graphs is when there is an edge that connects two vertices, we say that vertices one and two are adjacent. Um, um, and we also say, we say something like the vertex four here is incident with the edges three, four, and four, five. When four is on the edge three, four, and on the edge four, five, then we say that it's incident with three, four, and four, five. Degree of the vertex is the number of in in edges incident with it. So that means just the number of edges that come out of it. So for example, um, in this graph, the degree of four is two because there's two edges incident with it. Uh, degree of six is three. Degree of seven is one. And the degree sequence of this graph is just the um, degrees of all the vertices written in non-increasing order. So three, 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 two, 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 one would be the degree sequence of this particular graph. There's uh, three vertices of degree three, three vertices of degree two, and one vertex of the, one vertex of degree one. We write the degree sequence sort of going down with ties allowed. So non-increasing sequence. Okay, so. I'm going to tell you what a graphic sequence is, but just let me uh, repeat myself and, re and, and say it one more time what a graph is. A simple graph is a pair of sets, V and E. V is a non-empty set of vertices. E is possibly empty set of edges, and elements of E are subsets of size two of V. Um, 
when we put um, the absolute value sign around a, around a set, we always mean the size of that set. So the size of V, the number of vertices is called the order of G. And if alpha is an edge, so alpha, an edge is again, a pair of vertices, then the way we talk about it is X and Y are adjacent. I already mentioned that. We also say X and alpha, the, the vertex and the edge are incident. Um, if X is in V, if X is a vertex, then the degree of X, D, D, E, G of X, the degree of X is the number of edges incident with it. Now the degree sequence um, is the list of the degrees of the vertices of the graph in non-increasing order. And non -increase, now, a non-increasing sequence of non-negative integers is called a graphic sequence, it's called graphic, if there is a simple graph whose degree sequence is precisely that sequence. In other words, if a graph walks through the door, you might ask, what's the degree sequence of that? So what are the degrees? And put them in non-increasing order. On the other hand, you might have a sequence and you might ask, is there some graph in the background that I could draw, a simple graph that I could draw in the background? No loops or double edges, but, but a simple graph so that when I find its degree sequence, it this is this particular sequence that I now have. If, if, that, if the answer is yes to that, then you have a graphic sequence. Otherwise, you don't. Okay. So our question really is, which sequences are graphic? So for example, the sequence 2, 1, 1, 0 is graphic. Why? And the proof of the pudding is in the eating. It's because here's a graph whose degree sequence is 2, 1, 1, 0. So if a sequence walks through the door and you're wondering, is it graphic or not? And if you think the answer is yes, uh, the way to show that it's yes is to just give me a simple graph and say, look, here's a graph that um, has the right number of vertices the right number of edges, and the degrees are exactly, in fact, all you need to check is the degrees. Are the degrees um, all the right? So for example, this graph has a vertex of degree two, two vertices of degree one, and one isolated vertex, a vertex of degree zero. On the other hand, one, 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 five ones is not graphic. There's no way you can draw a graph uh, with, those, uh, uh, with those degrees. You could, for example, the degree one graph means that it's connect has is adjacent to one other vertex. Okay, well maybe this guy is adjacent to that one. Two of these could be adjacent. Another two could be adjacent. But then that last one, leftover one, won't have anybody to be adjacent to. But when you want to show something is not graphic, then it's not it's not good enough for me to say, well, I couldn't draw a good graph, or I tried hard enough and it didn't work. You have to have come up with a proof, and that's what really the purpose of the Havel Hakimi theorem is. But before that, there is a simpler um, criteria uh, called the sort of the handshake lemma that um, uh, appeared in, in one of the first papers that people consider a paper by, on graph theory by Euler. So if you have a graph, but this must, be, it must have been known forever. Um, so the graph, again, is a set of vertices and edges. Um, and if you have the degree sequence, so d1, d2, d3, dp are the degree sequence, then the sum of the degrees is twice the number of edges. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's a fact that I will tell you in a second why that is. Um, and in particular, the number of vertices of G with odd degree is even. The number of odd numbers in your degree sequence must all, always be even. And in particular, the second sequence here has five ones, couldn't be graphic. So if this theorem is true, that would be give you a quick proof of why that sequence is not graphic. This is not if and only if for sure, because it doesn't tell you that if these conditions are satisfied, then the uh, sequence is graphic. It does not say that. By the way, you should stop the video and try to prove this. This is not too complicated at all. Um, and, and you should be able to prove it. That is that actually this is this theorem is, is true in more generally. It's true for all general graphs. Even if you had loops and, um, and uh, double edges, this theorem would be true. So what's the proof of it? So what you do is that you go at, at, to each of the vertices, there's P vertices, and because the, the, degree, the degree sequence was D1, D2, D3, DP, there's P vertices, go to each one of the vertices and ask them, how many edges are you incident with? And each one of them will tell you the degree. And so when you add that up, you will get D1 plus D2 all the way till DP. So when you ask each vertex and add up the answers, you will get D1 plus D2 plus DP all the way till DP. But um, every edge was counted twice. That's because every edge has two vertices and it got counted when you ask this vertex and when, also when you ask the other the vertex at the other end. So each edge got counted twice. And so this is actually twice 
the number of edges, and that's what we wanted to show. So in particular, if the number of vertices of odd degree was odd, so there was odd number of odd degrees, um, then the sum of these odd degrees would be odd. And, uh, and um, there might be some even ones, but if you take the odd ones and the even ones and add them, um, like for example, three plus eight, you will still get odd. So the sum of the degrees would be odd altogether. And that's not, a, uh, that's not possible because the sum of the degrees gotta be twice the number of edges and that's an even number. Okay, so this is one criteria that you, you could check right away to see if, if, if something is a, um, a graphic sequence or not. If, if the sum of the degrees is, is, is not even, then, then certainly it's not a graphic sequence. But, um, but that, that, that's not a, uh, uh, if and only if it's not a character. I'm, I'm gonna give you an algorithm, a way of thinking about it, and then we'll see if this works always or not. So um, uh, as a test case, let's look at this uh, sequence, seven, six, five, five, four, 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 two, one. And maybe this walk through the door and we wanna know is this graphic? Again, that means, is there a simple graph whose degree sequence is exactly this? If there was such a graph, if this, uh, so let's say G was such a graph, then it would have nine vertices. Well, because we have nine degrees here. And if you add these up and divide them by two, we get the number of edges. The number of edges is 19. So we know something about this possible graph, but we don't know if it exists or not. And so then what we might do is we might um, do sort of a thought experiment. We might say, well, which could be the vertices that are adjacent to that degree seven vertex? Look at that highest degree vertex which ones might, might, might it be adjacent to? Well, it could be adjacent to any seven of the other ones, but you might say, well, maybe, possibly, uh, not necessarily, but maybe it's adjacent to um, the seven vertices with the highest degree. Uh, maybe the seven is adjacent not to just any random seven, but the next ones, this, the one with degree six, the two with degree five, the other two with degree four, the other three with degree four, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and maybe the degree two, but not the degree one. If that was the case, then you can say, well, what if I eliminate that vertex seven um, and its edges? And then what would happen is that you would know what the degree sequence you get. You would get um, five, four, four, three, three, one, one. So everything got subtracted, like the seven went away, and I subtracted one from the following seven, and I left the last one alone. So if by chance that um, uh, that vertex of highest degree was adjacent to the seven um, vertices of, uh, of high degree, of the highest degree, then if we eliminate that and its edges, then we get a graph with this degree sequence. But then we ask, well, which vertices are adjacent to this degree five vertex, this new degree five vertex that we have. And maybe again, it's adjacent to not just any random one of the, 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 of the other ones, but the ones that have the highest degree coming after it, the two fours and the two three, then the three threes. So again, maybe, maybe, but what, but I'm putting a question mark because who knows if that's true or not. But if so, then if you eliminate five, then you will get that um, the remaining graph will have a degree sequence three, three, two, 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 one, one. And, and we continue this and, and we say, well, maybe degree three is connected to the next three. And so when then we get two, one, one, two, one, one. Now this is not a degree sequence because it's not a non-increasing order. So we might want to re re rearrange it. And then we do this again, uh, one more time when we say, well, maybe the degree two is connected to this degree two and that degree one. And if we subtract one from those and, and eliminate that two, then we get um, uh, one, 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 zero. Now one, 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 zero is a graphic sequence. It's just two edges and an and a isolated point. And so this last one is graphic. And because of that, the, so must be the original one because we made some assumptions, but we got to something that was graphic and we can now go back and keep adding the vertices and, and connecting them to the right vertices and make our way back to a, a graph with um, with this um, uh, graphic sequence, or well, with that with that sequence as is this sequence of degrees. So, so so let's see let's see how that would work in practice. So we, I want a simple graph with degree C, with this degree sequence. My algorithm led me to say that well maybe I should start from this one 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 zero and make my way back up 
to this 76554421. So um, the 1110 is two edges and, a, and an isolated vertex. So here it is. Now, then what I want to do is I want to um, um, add another vertex and, and I want to uh, end up with the uh, degree sequence 221111. So that means that this six, now the six is going to be my new vertex, it's going to have degree two. But so I need another degree two and I've got to make sure there's no degree zero. So I need to connect that six to one of the degree ones and the degree zero. And if I do that, now I've got my 221111. Now for the next step, I add another vertex and I want to now be, make it may, make this graph to be three, three, two, 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 one, one. And I know that this vertex seven, this new vertex has degree three, it's got to be connected to three things. And because I I started out um, um, by, by that thought experiment of eliminating the highest degree and seeing what the degree sequences are, I will always be able to go back um, as in this way. So uh, with the seven is going to have degree three. There's got to be another one other degree three. So I should be connecting to one of the degree two things to degree get three degree three. I should leave the degree ones alone. And then I need um, another, a bunch of degree twos. So, so, so here, here it is. So I've got now a, a vertex of two vertices of degree three, three vertices of degree two and two vertices of degree one. Keep going. Now I need this new vertex eight to be um, um, uh, degree five, and it needs to be connected uh, to those vertices to, so as to give me a four, four, three, 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 and and if and, and the one one stays. Well, that means that it's going to be connected to everything else, but other than those two, um, um, those two one and two, which are which are separate. And our final step, we have another vertex nine, and we need to now make that a vertex seven. So the degree seven, so I need to connect it to seven things. And I see that I only left with one um, uh, degree one. And so one of those degree ones needs to be connected to this to make it degree nine. And, and, I need, and, and then I need to judiciously make sure that the other ones are correct and, and you can do that. And if you do that, um, you have your graph with, uh, um, with, uh, uh, degree seven, six, five, five, four, 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 two, and one. Yeah. Okay. So now the question is that what about the count converse? What if we end up with a non-graphic sequence? So this procedure we made was start with a graphic sequence and take out the largest degree sequence, make an assumption that um, it's only it's it's adjacent to the vertices that are right um, uh, that have had the highest degree after it. And, and, and subtract one from those and get a new degree sequence and keep going. Now we saw that if you get an actual degree it's graphic sequence at the end, then you can work your way back up and come up with a graph with that degree sequence. But what if you end up with a non-graphic sequence? Does that mean that the sequence wasn't graphic or does that mean that some of the choices you made around the, along the way were not right? Uh, because along the way, we made a lot of arbitrary choices. We, we kept deciding that uh, the highest degree vertex is connected to which ones? The ones that, uh, the right number of things that had high degree. But maybe that highest degree is not connected to one of those and in fact is connected to one of the lowest degrees. So we made some choices. And um, and again, the assumption was that the largest degree vertex was connected to other large degree vertices. Um, would different choices result in a graphic sequence? So if we went one way and didn't work out, maybe we should go back and change our, assumptions and say, well, maybe this vertex isn't connected to all the ones, maybe skips one and, and is connected to, to another one of them. Now, uh, the amazing thing about the Havel-Hakimi theorem uh, says that that's not so. You never have to say sorry. This thing, if you just do it once, if it's graphic, you've got a graphic sequence, this algorithm. Otherwise, um, um, it's not a graphic sequence. So this is a theorem um, due to Havel, Watzlaw Havel, and um, say for law Hakimi, um, and um, uh, and it goes as follows. So, so I'm going to state it again. Consider the two sequences. One of them is S T1 T2 T3 T S all the way till T S D1 blah 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 D N. So it has n plus s plus one vertices. S is its this is a degree sequence, and this S is the highest degree. And I'm and I'm um, 
naming the next S because, because my algorithm wants to do something with them, wants to subtract one from them. And these are the rest of the, these are the rest of the degrees, the ones that are not going to be affected by eliminating S and making the assumption that it's connected to the next S highest degrees. And then I have another one that the, the, the degree sequence that I get when I eliminate S and um, with the assumption that it's connected to the next S. Next S. And, um, and I'm going to assume that the first sequence is in non-increasing order, meaning that the first sequence is actually a, um, a degree sequence. Now, the second one may not may, may come out of whack and you have to rearrange it, but um, uh, this is what we are going to consider, these two sequences. So again, I have a degree sequence. S is the largest one. These are the T's are the S, the next S largest degrees, and the D's are the other ones. And, and um, with my thought experiment, uh, the idea was that eliminate S and assume that it's connected to the next largest S degree vertices. And um, so take, uh, take all of its edges out also. So eliminate S and then subtract one from the T's. And this is the sequence you're left with. And the conclusion of the theorem is that sequence one is graphic if and only if sequence two is graphic. Of, of course, graphic after rearranging because they might be out of order. And this is a very nice theorem because um, it says that if someone, a, a sequence walks through the door, you don't have to do any drawing at all. You can just play with the, um, with the sequence, with, with the numbers, uh, just keep eliminating one of the, the higher, highest one and subtracting one from so many uh, of, of the high ones and keep doing that. And if at the end you get an obvious graphic sequence, then, then the original one was graphic. If at the end you get a obvious non-graphic sequence, then neither is the original one. Okay, now one direction as we saw is straightforward. If you get that the last, the, the, I mean, this is not many steps. This is just one step along the way, This the, the, the way the theorem is stated. But, but of course you can do one step, one step you can do as many steps as you want. And, and, and if you started with a graphic sequence, you will continue having graphic sequences. If you start with, uh, if you end up with a non-graphic sequence, you must have started all the way with non-graphic sequences. And we saw one direction is straightforward. If you know sequence two is graphic, the thing you got is graphic, then the original thing must be graphic also, because all you do is add a vertex and make it adjacent to the first S vertices, and then you're good. You, you, you are, um, you've, you've got, you, uh, you got a, um, a graph with its degree sequence being sequence one. So the, the crux of this theorem, the reason it's not obvious at all, is why the other direction is true. Why is it that all those choices we made didn't make any difference? Okay, so here's where we are. H is a graph with degree sequence S, T1 through TS, D1 through DN. And the question is that must there be a graph with degree sequence T1 minus one, T2 minus one, TS minus one, D1 through DN. Now you might say, well, of course there is. Take S out and, um, and take its edges out with those S things. But there might, but the graph H, that's the one graph we have, its vertex S may not be connected uh, to these guys, to the ones with degrees T's. It might be connected to some of those D's. And therefore there's no reason to believe that there is such a graph like this. This is the contrapositive of saying that if the thing you get is not graphic, then neither is the thing you started with. So the point is that if the second sequence is not graphic, the first one cannot be graphic either, because if it was graphic, then I'm just going to actually prove to you that um, the second one must have been graphic also. So, so that's what we have to do. We, someone gave us a graph. It's degree sequence, but we don't know what graph it is. We, we can't say that, give me a graph where S is, where the highest degree is connected to these guys. Maybe we, there is no such graph. They, they gave me got some graph with this degree sequence. I want to know, must there, can I go to the, that next step and, and it, it, I mean, I seem to have made a lot of assumptions, but maybe I can go to this next step without any assumptions. Um, I, then the next step being a, finding a graph whose degree sequence is T1 minus one, T2 minus one, all the way till TS minus one, D1 through DN, acting as if S was connected to those first uh, S vertices and, and we just took S out and, and its edges. But the thing is that this new graph doesn't have to have anything to do with the old graph. It's just that, um, um, we are just saying that if there's such a graph with that degree sequence, there must be a graph with this degree sequence. So let's see if that's the case or not. Vertices of H, I'm going to call capital S. 
and capital T1 through Ts and capital D1 through Dn, the degree of S is going to be S. The degree of the Ts are going to be the Ts. The degree of T1 is going to be T1. The degree of T2 is going to be T2. The degree of Ts is going to be Ts. And the degree of D1 is going to be little d1. The degree of D2 is going to be little d2. And the degree of Dn is going to be little dn. Okay, so that's our setup. Now, there are two cases. I'm going to uh, spin my wheels a little bit just to set up and get to the core of the issue. One case is if that in H, actually I'm lucky and S is actually adjacent to those vertices T1 through Ts. Remember, H is an actual graph that someone gave you. And it's possible, maybe not likely, but possible that S is adjacent to all those vertices. Okay. The other case is that uh, there is one of the Ts that S is not adjacent to. So S is not adjacent to at least one of the Ti's. Now, in case one, we said is easy because if S is actually adjacent to T1 through Ts, then eliminate it and all the edges. And then you will actually have a graph that has degree sequence T1 minus one, T2 minus one, Ts minus one, and D1 through Dn. So these are undisturbed and all the other ones are subtracted one. And so you're all good. So the problem is that what if S is not adjacent to one of Ti's? So, so again, the vertices of H are, are S uh, and the Ts, the degrees are degree of capital S is S, the degree of the Ti's are Ti, the degree of Dj's are Dj, and these are in non-increasing order. And we are at case two where S is not adjacent to some of the Ti's. This is the trouble case. Um, and I want a graph with degree sequence this nevertheless. Even though uh, S is not adjacent to one of those high degree vertices, I still want a graph with this degree sequence. To, so what I'm going to do is modify H without changing its degree sequence, um, but with S adjacent to, to Ti. So I'm going to change things around. So I'm, I'm back to case one. Um, and case one was the easy case, and then I will be done. So that's my plan. So, so the degree of S is S, and S is not adjacent to Ti. That's what we were told. Well, because um, um, there was Sts, and S is now not adjacent to one of them, S must be adjacent to one of the Ds. So, so S must be adjacent to one of the Di's, the J's. So, so say DJ. Um, now, um, so, so this is the picture that I'm thinking. S is not adjacent to Ti. I'm sort of putting a dashed line to, to, show, to, to indicate that there's not an edge there. But then there is an edge between S and DJ. So that's the situation we're in. Now, Ti, the degree of... Uh, capital Ti is bigger than the degree of Dj. That's why, because this, this the original thing was a degree sequence and, and the Ti were the large degree guys. Those have are greater or equal to Dj. Now, there are two subcases. One case is that if Ti is equal to Dj, that uh, even though um, S was not adjacent to Ti and it was adjacent to Dj, actually the degree of Dj is the same as Ti. That's possible because we are allowing ties you could have a lot of the same number of things. But if that's the case, really there's no problem. Just switch the place of Ti and Tj. You call this vertex Ti, that one Dj, so now change their names. And um, and then S is connected to the new Ti and, and you're back to case one. So, so, so that causes no problem. So really now we are focusing on the right question is if Ti is greater than Dj. So um, S is not adjacent to Ti. And is it adjacent to, and is adjacent to DJ, DJ? And the degree of Ti is actually bigger than the degree of DJ. So T is actually adjacent to a low degree uh, vertex. So that's the only remaining case. And this is the last slide, and I will be done very quickly, but very cleverly. So we're again vertices of H are S and the T's, T, ST's, and MD's. The degree of capital S is S, degree of the TI is a little TI, degree of DJ or DJ. S is not adjacent to TI, but it is adjacent to DJ. And we know that the degree of TI, the number of edges incident with TI is little TI, and that's bigger than uh, the degree of DJ. And what we, again, we still want a graph with this degree sequence, T1 minus one, T2 minus one, all the way till TS minus one, and then D1 through Dn. So, we start by saying, well, Ti has more neighbors than Dj because its degree is bigger than the degree of Dj. And so that means that there must exist. Backward E means there exists. There exists a vertex W somewhere in this graph H uh, such that Ti is adjacent to it, but Dj is not. Uh, because if, if Dj was adjacent to everything that Ti was adjacent to, 
then the, 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 its degree would be at least as big as the degree of Ti. But the degree of Ti is bigger, actually bigger. So there we've got, we've got, we, have, we should be able to find this vertex W that Ti is adjacent to it, but Dj is not. Okay, so this is the picture we have. Remember, S was not adjacent to Ti, but it was adjacent to Dj. Now we're bringing this other vertex into the picture W that's, that's the adjacent to Ti, but not to Dj. So now here's the trick. The trick is remove those two edges, S, the edge SDJ and the edge TIW from H, and then add the edges STI and WDJ instead. So change the picture so that it looks like this. So S is adjacent to TI, W is adjacent to DJ, and TI is not adjacent to W, and S is not adjacent to DJ. Well, we change the graph H. But the point is that the new graph has the same degree sequence as H. Because look, S, um, we eliminated one of its edges, but we add a different H. The same with, with all other, other three vertices. For every vertex, we took away one of its edges, but we gave it another edge. So the degree sequence of this new graph is exactly the same as H. But in this new graph, this now S now is connected to TI. The problem was, we were not in case one. That was the thing that was bothering us, that S was not was connected to a low degree vertex and not to a high degree vertex. And now we did a little bit of surgery and we now fixed it. So now S is connected to TJ. Now it might be, um, and so you might have to repeat this because there might be, a, S might not be connected to several of the TAs, but for each one of them, for the TIs. So for each one of them, you can do the same thing and, and come up with a new graph that is connected to that guy. And eventually you will be back to case one and you will be done. And this is the um, end of the proof of the Havel Hakimi theorem, which is a very nice proof um, in graph theory. Um, if you are interested in these kinds of videos, like and subscribe, and, um, and then you will be uh, subjected to more videos like this on your feed. See you on the next lecture.